Bow Wow. Welcome to Dog Star. Each week we sit down with a star of hip hop and R&B, and this week we have the pleasure of sitting down with Saya. How are you feeling? Good. I'm feeling really good. Really excited to be here and talk to you guys. Been yeah. waiting to do this for a while, so I'm glad we can finally do this. It's been a long time coming. Exactly. We're excited to sit down with Thank you, you too. Know. Let's get into it. Let's, Let's it. get into it. So, are you from Minnesota? I am. Um, was born in Rochester, Minnesota, actually, and was we um, went to a few schools. Um, kind of stayed by Stewartville a lot, which is by Rochester. Um, then I moved up to Mound, and. That's where I went to school, basically the rest of, I think it was a little bit of middle school, and then the rest of high school was all at Mount, which is called Mount West Tonka. So during, yeah, during this era, rewind just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> maybe before middle school, yeah. uh, like early musical memories, like I don't know what you're, who you were living with when yeah. you were a kid or whatever, but who was like choosing the, the music before you were old enough to pick? <laughs> or who was, was playing on? the music? Yeah, um, exactly. A lot of my dad, my dad... um he raised me and stuff, and so he like he's a drummer. He was signed to Atlantic and stuff, and Whoa. so he did a lot of the music stuff. He kind of showed me like Striper was a big one because they're Christian artists and stuff, and that's kind of really cool. And then Seven Dust, they're like one of my favorite bands of all time. Morgan Rose is one of my favorite drummers. So is my dad. But he showed me Morgan Rose, and I've met Morgan Rose, and what? Yeah, he's Whoa. a really cool dude, and definitely like Seven Dust, Striper, like some of my fond memories, a little bit of Slipknot and stuff, and. My dad controlled definitely in the car, and he would always like any album I'd like. He'd like get the CD and stuff. I remember, forget the name, but it was a blue CD of Seven Dust, and then he had Stripers, one of their albums that I really liked too. And he would always play them. System of a Down was a big one too. Um, my brother, me and my brother were really, really close. We're still cl- really close. Older but, brother, younger brother. Um, he's older. He's okay. a guitar player and very talented singer too. He is amazing. What? But um. He um, showed me a lot of, like, his, his was, like, more like System of a Down at the time, kind of, like, punk stuff, too. Mm-hmm. I remember, he had, like, shelves of, like, because his dad was a big collector, too. We're half-brothers. So, like, he had a bunch of, like, records and vinyls. And I remember going over there, he, like, let me borrow, like, five CDs each time I go over. Whoa. That's tough. And it was really cool. <laughs> yeah. He, he was really cool for doing that and stuff. And we had a band, actually, called Oh No back in the day. Family a, band. Yeah, family band. Okay. Yep, my first family band. <laughs> it was really cool. And so I guess, like, my dad and my brother were definitely the biggest ones when I was growing up. A little bit of my grandma and grandpa, too. They were big into, like, Stevie Nicks and Neil Diamond. What? So they actually did a cover band for it for, like, I mean, they still kind of do it, too, but definitely for, like, about 30, 40 years they did that with, like, doing Stevie Nicks. My grandma sounds exactly like Stevie Nicks and looks like her. It's wild. What? And then my grandpa sounds exactly like Neil Diamond. <laughs> He's got that voice for it. It's cool. They used to have a seven-piece, and my dad used to be the drummer. Whoa. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So raised by all these musicians, yeah. how early, how young were you when they shoved an instrument in your hands? Oh, early. I remember being, like, literally, like, two, doing the drums and stuff. And I remember, like... When I was about four or five, my mom and my dad got me um, a drum set, and then they got my um, brother a guitar. And it was funny, my brother's dad got him the same guitar without talking to my mom and dad. They got the same guitar Whoa. for him. It was wild. I don't even know how that happened. I remember my dad was like, what? But the way he opened both of them at the same time, and we were like, that's the same guitar. <laughs> like, yeah, to a that's tea. wild. Kind of worked out good, though, because he was able to go in and out of them, and they stayed good for a long time. But yeah, I remember that was like a big pivotal moment was getting drums. And then my dad, of course, always had drums because he's a drummer. That's what he does still to this day. And So do you think that they had a specific strategy in mind for how to like get you into music? Because I know when parents try to make <laughs> kids do stuff, sometimes they'll like rebel eventually. Like play piano. Yeah, right. 100%. Like my dad was always really like cool about that. Like I showed interest at a young age. I remember, I don't remember what age. It might have been like two or three, but it's one of my first memories. It was like... I got flown to Las Vegas because he was playing on Las Vegas with Grade 8. And um, I got up on stage. He has a picture of it, maybe a video too, but I know for sure there's a picture somewhere. And, like, I'm on his drum set at this venue. What? Yeah, it was really cool. And so I, like, just found interest in it right away. Obviously, yeah. people would always see me on the drum set and they're like, when, he's gonna, when is he going to do it, you know? Yeah. And it came organically. And then I found sports and mm. kind of, like, after my mom died, like, I kind of lost a little bit of passion for drumming and stuff. And then, Whoa. like, with, like, sports and stuff, it was kind of just, like, I found friends through that easier, you know? Right. I feel like music was very much, at that time, like, dimensional to my family. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, nothing against that. But, like, when I found sports, I was able to find friends. And so I gravitated to find friends at the time, you know? And then 
as I got older, I found music again, but it wasn't in drumming. Um, I still drum a little bit. I wish I want to get back into it a lot more now that I'm like doing it a lot, like with um, just all music and producing now. Like I really love it. And then I found um, writing um, was like, I believe when I was 11, I did my first like I ran a couple things before that. But when I was 11, that was like the first the first two songs I made. One, the first one I made was for actually a school project. What? <laughs> it was called the Kit Kat song. We had, to, we had to make a project, and it was, like, this presentation for, like, selling an item or something because it was mm. a business, like, um, class, and we had to make a presentation. I was like, well, if I make a song and sell them, like, a product, that would do good. I got, like, the highest grade in the class for that, for being creative. <laughs> and uh, like, can you recite a few lines for us right I've now? tried. Oh, my God. I've tried <laughs> finding the track, too. I think my cousin actually has the track. No, way. I want to find it. I'll send it to you guys. It's not great. Awesome. It's horrible, <laughs> but, it, but I love that. It's horrible to be honest. I was listening to a few, honestly, like a few weeks ago. I was listening to a few old tracks that I had that are like six years old, and I'm like, wow, this is not great. <laughs> but you got to put that in the documentary. Yeah, you got to put the exactly. Vegas drumming in the documentary. Yeah, 100. Yeah, but I love that because like I was even just like the other day I uh, posted something about I was a track I was doing, and it's like um. One of my favorite singers of all time is Cameron Hancock. He's from um, American Head Charge, and they're Minnesota-based and stuff. And my um, aunt actually used to go on tour with them and has done, I think, she's the only feature on one of their songs ever, I think. Whoa. Whoa. And um, so, but I've met him a few times, and he's a big influence for my music of, like, what I do and stuff. And I love his singing. And so he's just been a big influence and stuff. And, Yeah. How old were you when your mother passed and you kind of got more into sports than music? Um, five. And then, Holy so no I way. did drumming a little bit still, like obviously staying in it. But I say around six, seven is when I found sports for real. And by that point, I was just like, I had found a few friends that lived by my grandma and like this um, click of like, we, we play football and like basketball all the time. And I became in this click of like a bunch of people. It was like 10, 20 people and like their friends and their friends. It was like, we were always like, if somebody can't play, some, there's going to be at least 10 people that can play. It was wild. And I remember that like, at where my grandma's house, there'd be like 10, 20 people all the what time. The and like all these people spending the night. And I'm like, this is kind of crazy. And it's like a small town. Stewartville's not a big town. It's kind of funny that like this little town had these many kids like, this just like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of funny, and but then like some things happened in school. Obviously, like at first my mom died, I definitely cried and stuff. But then like I just like was this tough guy, this tough little kid, and like mm. I kind of took on. I didn't have to, but my brain took on this like perception that I had to be this big person for my family. It's just how my brain works; it always has. And so like I haven't cried many times about her in my life, and so I just felt like I needed to be there for my family, you know. Right. Especially seeing my dad; like he took that hard, just like you know, the love of his life and stuff. So. I just felt like, and then my brother and stuff and other people, I was just like, I haven't cried much about it as I should. As I've gotten older, I've definitely, it's like come back, you know, trauma and stuff, that right. stuff comes around, you processing know. Processing. And processing. Yeah. When, when you process it, you need to and stuff at the time. But then like, yeah, definitely like early on after the first year or two and stuff, I definitely got into like trouble with like fights and stuff because like certain people would find out about me and stuff with mm. like my story and then they would say things and then it's like, can't let it, that kind of slide. Just like, it just yeah. like goes like a click in you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. And so there was like a few times like stuff happened and like my family was very understanding because they knew like I'm like a very calm and like nice person. Like that's like who I love to be. Mm-hmm. So being a kid and having to deal that sucked, you know what I mean? Like it was not fun. And so yeah. eventually like I went in and out a few times and my dad had found a few people and um, kind of went to those schools and some schools weren't great. So we go back to Storville and then eventually it was just like, you know what, let's go to Mound. Let's all move up there. Like my aunt had a place in Brooklyn Center. We stayed up there for a bit. And then by the time I could get into Mound, my great aunt, I believe, it's my own grandma's sister. She let me stay there for a bit while my dad was getting a place. And then my dad got a place and then I just stayed there. And it was great. Had great teachers and I found friends and it was really good. I mean, overall, like that place was really good. I didn't deal with much bullying at all. I think I only had like the first year I was there in middle school, like I got in a fight and this like, it was just like same thing. This dude found out some New things kid, about me, yeah. said stupid things, and like old behavior came, you know, into a factor real quick. Mm. But this guy was really cool, and he like nipped it in the butt real fast. And then I like I don't know, there was like a switch in me, and I was like, I'm gonna control this. This will be. I'm gonna a I'm gonna figure. Start, yeah. yeah, I'm like I don't need to be angry. You know what I mean? So I found some actually really good teachers that I happened to get close with because like. I didn't get great grades right away, and that's not even because I'm not smart. It was just like I didn't care. I was like I don't need to do this. Like 
I'm focused on playing basketball. Right, right, <laughs> Gonna right. be in the NBA yeah, one I'm gonna day. be in the I NBA. Mean, I'm focused yeah. on basketball and doing yeah. these things and being with friends and stuff. And there was this one teacher, Miss Bradburn. She's the best teacher in the world. She like flipped me in my head and like she would just talk to me about deep things that like some people didn't, especially like adults and stuff. She just like could see this potential in me, and she was just like really cool, just really cool and down to earth. And like she would never yell at me if I was like if I'd fail a test, she wouldn't come up to me and be like, "Why are you failing a test?" She'd be like come and talk to me and be like, why? Well, what do you want to do with your life, yeah. Josiah? And I'm like, well, I love music and stuff. And like, she's like, so you don't really want to be here, right? And I'm like, not really. Like, it's not even, and she's like, look, I know you're smart. Like, you come in here and you do like certain assignments and you get like all of it right. When it comes to tests, you just like don't care. <laughs> and mm -hmm. those are like, what well, you need to care about a little bit. And so like by like sophomore year, I was getting like all A's and B's, which was crazy she wow she just switched things in my brain and she's like you can still hang out with friends and like you know do this you know it's just only a couple years you know she's like you don't need to go to college if you're doing music and stuff you don't necessarily need to do yeah. this or that you know and you grew up in a musical family that's always going to be around so she helped me figure out that i could do all of it without really taking away from other things you know that's was, amazing yeah she that's was awesome huge. yeah miss bradburn Big shout out to Miss Bradburn. <laughs> were there any other teachers that were specifically kind of steering you towards music or writing, perhaps? Um, or back Tr into music yeah, or writing? Yeah, definitely. Miss Trembley was a big one, too. Um, she was my English teacher. And I had a few English teachers, um, actually, but she was definitely, like, the one that, like, also, she saw my writing. And, like, I didn't necessarily write in, like, an English, like, you know, way of, like, how a teacher would want but she could tell, like, she would always tell me, she's like, you write like a writer, like a musical artist. You know what I mean? She always said that. She's like, you write very specifically. You know what I mean? She's like, the reason I pass you all the time, it's not even because necessarily it's like what I want, but she's like, I see your talents. And she's like, I wouldn't say necessarily go be like an English teacher, you know what I mean? But she's like, I see your visions and stuff. She's like, you're very poetic and the way you talk about things and your stories are just like second to none. She was like, you're one of my favorite students. Yeah, Miss Tremblay was awesome too. She was great. I had a few of them. Yeah, definitely. There's a few other ones, too. Um, Miss Morinville was really cool. She was a chemistry teacher, I believe. Whoa. Yeah. She was cool. And she kind of, like, she had, like, a person in her class that would just help people around because her class was definitely pretty in-depth and very fast-paced. It was, like, basically she's going to, her whole thing is, like, I'm going to teach you what to do the whole class period, and it's on you what you do after that. If you fail, it's on you, you know? Whoa. Yeah, she basically gives answers to the whole class, and if you don't listen, great. <laughs> you're gonna Cold fail then blooded. yeah she's like i'm you know and if you really need help there's miss barnes and miss barnes was really cool she was like if you're behind she can probably help you get back on track she was really cool too and yeah miss warmville was cool she kind of like understood because miss bradburn kind of like vouched for me to everybody oh. so if i was ever like struggled she would like talk to them miss warmville was cool yeah she talked to me about a few things and actually funny enough i found a friend later on in life and Miss Lovettson was a, another person. She was a chemistry teacher, I believe, and um, definitely a science teacher of some sort, though. But um, I had her, right, for like a year, and mm -hmm. we were also really close. Like, she was really cool and nice to me, and she talked to me a little bit about my life. And then later on, wow. I found a friend through work, and it happened to be his, um, I believe, like, he was related to her, though, somehow. What? <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Well, small. I mean, it was very just, Minnesotan. Yeah, but, yeah, that was yeah. trippy. I was like... He's like, do you know her? And I'm like, yeah, I actually do. Right. Like, we were actually pretty close when I was in her what class. The heck? There's weird stuff. But that support system, yeah. like, very, very important, it 100%. sounds like. It During was, these formative years. 100%. At least. Yeah. And actually, um, the last person would be in my, um, the vice principal was really like, he knew my story and he happened to have a crazy story himself. You know, um, I don't know the full story of his wife, but something happened to his wife and he always like stayed by her side and like supported her through what happened. And um, I remember that. Was, um, he was like some like thing that people got together to see and he had talked about it and it was like a big moment for my family. They're like, wow, that's crazy. That's your vice principal. I'm like, yeah, he's cool. He's really cool. And he would always like, there was like a few times that things would happen and he would like never like let me get like put in anything that would like harm me or like with any like um, detention or this or that. He would always like try to go around it and like help me out and Whoa, like that's any sort of, sort of thing. He just like, I don't know. He liked, I was very different from my um peers at my school like they mm -hmm. were very cool and like i like i said i like that school probably the most out of all the schools obviously still had my problems and stuff um but yeah he just he saw that i was a little different i was definitely you know i'm from a musical family and like that school was very like to a t like the biggest things were like hockey and football and like i happened to play football football for a bit and then i went to basketball and stuff but then like you know, just was musical and stuff and more creative person. And yeah. definitely at my school, it was like 
one of the only ones. I mm. my other friend John Hoffman, who is called Smoke Break, he's another um, artist, and he's one of my best friends too. But um, he was probably the only other one at that school that made music like me. You know, mm. we like are very different in how we make music. He's very more hip hop driven and like um like plug and rage and stuff like that. He makes great stuff and like hyper pop as well. And I make those two, but that stuff with his like main thing and like my main thing is like EDM and metal and hip hop. So it's different and we like dress different. We're like total opposites, but we're best friends. <laughs> but cool. would be probably the only two people sticking out in the crowd, maybe yeah, style exactly, wise. Exactly, because John was another person they would like, you know, talk to and be like, mm. if they he needed anything or anything. It's, it's really cool. Miss Brabant is like a big person for him too. We were in that class together and stuff. So it's like funny, like, all of it goes in full circle. <laughs> oh so my were you gosh. guys making music back in school? Like were you bit. writing songs and stuff? A little stuff? bit, yeah. Okay. And then what music were you listening to when you were picking the music? Because I, I know <laughs> we didn't really get to that. So it's like around the time that you started writing your first yeah. songs, who were you listening to? Um, Logic's a big one. Like, okay. I remember like reason I wasn't as good is because I would always try to rap like Logic. He always is the fast flow and stuff. You can't compare yourself to Logic. That's what I'm saying. Not the beginning. No, exactly. And like, people would always be like, you're too fast. And in my mind, I'm like, I don't care. (laughs) Right. I love Logic. And NF too, he's another great one. NF's cool though because he doesn't do like all fast stuff. He definitely like spreads out and Logic has too through the years. Definitely at the time was like, I loved fast rap and like, you know, fitting a lot in, but also like content, like, you know, not necessarily mumble rap because like I don't like people that rap fast and they're not really like saying too much because that's mm. also mumble rap in itself in my opinions in some ways you know and that's why I like the logic because I feel like most of the time you know as I got older I feel like obviously he had so much content like he just kind of started messing around but definitely his early stuff is like super a lot of content with also rapping like fast and also like these weird flows but also finding some stuff to say and that was a big thing for me I've always wanted to be a person that can like always have something to say I mean any type of song I make is just like there's something there that somebody can resonate with, you know, in some way or form. That's like a big thing for me, you know, is even though I make a lot of music, I take pride in like what I write, you know, I'll have fun, you know, like I'll be with friends and we can freestyle and talk about whatever. I'll do that too. But definitely on like a 90% basis, it's like, I want to care about what's in there, you know? I mean, I personally, as a fan, I think it shows in the art. We got to take a break in about 30 seconds, but we're going to talk more about your songwriting process and the the evolution of your artistry. Should ask if you, if your first artist name was Saya. It was not. I actually went through like four names. <laughs> well, I, well, I don't think we have time before the break. But make save sure them. you find. We'll save them. We'll save follow them. on Instagram, uh, Josiah Hagbaum. Hagbaum yeah. um, on Instagram, Saya Hagbaum on pretty much everything else. But you can just search for Saya with a dollar sign for the S, and Heck it'll yeah. pop up everywhere. Make sure you follow the show at Dogstar Podcast. That's pretty much everywhere. We'll be right back with more Saya. Bow yeah. wow. Bow wow. Oh, wow. Welcome back to Dogstar. We're sitting down with Saya, but before the break, we found out it hasn't always been Saya. There was art, previous <laughs> artist names, so it was the very first one. And what, what? Jen was the first one. And I believe what I had intended for it to mean was Justice Everybody Nobody. But then it was like, I don't think people were always going to know that. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go to Guess, right? And then there was like, I remember it was like, G U. E S T, and then I put an X in there eventually, and I was like, all right, I don't want that name anymore. That's a confusing too, because people were like, is it guest or guest? And I was like, all right, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Lost, and that one was actually pretty cool. I had that for like a year or two, and it was L X S T, and people liked that one. And then it was also eventually by the end of it, people were getting confused, and I was already thinking of changing it. And then it was funny, somebody blew up with that name. Me and this oh, one dude no. had the same name. Neither of us had a, like, copyright or anything. Right. So he ended up, like, literally blowing up, getting millions of views. And I was like, you can have it. It's yours now. <laughs> I was like, not dealing with that. And then it's funny. My friend John, who I was talking about before Smoke Break, um, we were just talking about names. And he's like, yeah, that dude blew up and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> not not great. But I was like, it's cool. I was already thinking about it. And it's kind of funny. My um, aunt, Lindy, um, who's also been signed. She's an artist. Her band is Great in the Apocalypse. They're really big in Minnesota. They've toured and stuff. But um, she was like... She's always called me Saya, you know me, or Sai, Saya, something around there always. You know, it's kind of always been her thing. A few people in my family have called me that too, but she definitely, I think, like started that, you cool. know. And so yeah, I don't know. We were talking, and he was like, "Why not Saya, but with a you know money sign?" 
I was like, that is, I mean, it kind of makes sense. I feel like that was written in the stars anyway. That's what it should have been. But I was just going through like identity stuff, you know what I mean? Figuring it out. Yeah. And when he said that, I was like, that's, that's the name. That's, that's just the like, one. you know, when people from that point on, they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's what it should have been <laughs> the whole time, you know? Can you tell us a little bit about like the struggle of, oh, but I've already made 12 songs yeah. as this artist, yeah. you know, can you talk about that kind of? Definitely like struggles with that, but luckily like I was in high school, so oh, I, I okay. didn't really care too much. And like each one only had like you know I don't know. I make a lot of music, so for me it was like maybe ten, twenty songs. And eventually it was like that's not enough for me to really like care too much about. And if I change names, it's mm-hmm. it's okay. You know what I mean? Definitely like the last one lost. Like I said, that kind of had like the most I guess like songs to it, and like had streaming stuff I had to figure out. And like I was on one streaming thing. I think it was United Masters. And I've stri- switched to DistroKid for um, Saya and stuff. So luckily it wasn't too hard. Like I didn't have to like really. And all those songs I didn't really want out anyway. That was a time mm. of like, like I said, high school stuff in high school. I didn't feel like I was great. And outside of high school, that's when I started getting, you know, with producers, working on stuff with my family more. So it worked out for me, I guess. But for other people, I can definitely see like I've been with a lot of people, like a lot of friends. And I was in this one group and they've changed a lot of names and. That definitely sucks. Like when you have like a, I don't know, 50 songs, 100 songs, like a whole catalog of music for yourself. That would be like right now, if that happened, that would suck. You know what I mean? That yeah. would that would be horrible. <laughs> You're not referring to the 777 Collective, are you? No. Different group. Different group. What yep. group is this that you're referring to? Um, Karmatic. Um. Karmatic. Um, they were, I don't know if they're still a thing anymore, but basically at the time, that's when I was outside of high school. I believe 19, maybe a little bit of 18. Definitely 19 was, like, the peak of it, though, of when, like, we were all together. I lived in this one. Me and my dad lived in this place, and basically there was a person that lived there. He was dating a girl there, and I happened to know that girl. Not, like, too much, but we lived in the same place, so my dad, like, was friends with her mom and stuff. So I knew her. We were friends and stuff. And she had this boyfriend named Davey, and he was in, like, this group and stuff, and they were called Karmatic. And he wanted to, like, you know, have me meet them and stuff. Eventually, their producer, they had, like, basically BKB was, like, their producer, like, mm-hmm. for everybody. And mm-hmm. if you needed, like, mix and mastering and, and beats or anything, he was, like, the guy. You know what I mean? Sick. Eventually, me and BKB got really close. I was over all the time. And he was doing an album for free. And just getting really close. You know, he kind of usually did that. Like, he'd work on a project for free just to gain that vibe with you. And, like, it's not really about the money. It's all good. You know, that will come. Yeah, I like that. Come and stuff. At least, like, the first album's like, it's all good. After that, we'll see if we vibe. And if we don't, all good. If I charge this and that and or whatever. You know what I mean? We vibed really hard. And he kind of needed a place to stay. So he moved in. After, like, no one, I don't know, we knew each other for a few months. Not long. Like, two months. And he lived with me for, like, eight months. We made a lot of music together. Then some you know, great stuff happened. I lost a lot of music once mm. he left. And then that's when I was like, but he taught me a lot of things. So right. it's a blessing, you know. Um, I lost a lot of music, though. And then eventually, you know, when that happened, I was like, well, I'm going to do it myself then. I'm just over relying on people at that point, you know yeah. what I mean? And I'm just going to become better, you know what I mean? Like, just as myself and then other people because I'm motivated, you know what I mean? And so I got really motivated. And every day, you know, anybody could ask my dad, you know, 10, 12 hours – a day still to this day like all i do is music you know what i mean even like when i was you know right now music's my full-time job but before that you know when i was having a job and stuff and doing eight hours then i'd still come home and do six eight hours and then the next day do 10 you know whatever my schedule could do you know just how it's always been ever since then it's like just music on music you know that dedication yeah and really like yeah i went through some bad breakups too during that time there was a girl that was in that collective and we dated for a bit and that got really gnarly you know what i mean because right. this whole thing was like everybody was tight but like too tight like everybody was like best friends and like dating whoever and it's like that got na- you know by the end of it, it was really nasty and stuff yeah, and they say don't mix business don't with mix pleasure, business that but way. it's like exactly. art and pleasure that's yep. like art and business and pleasure yeah that's it's what i'm saying like, it, got, oh. it got really just nasty and not good you know did it make some great music a hundred percent oh yeah after that i mean I just released a song, actually. That's funny. It's a really, like, one of the first... It's actually funny because BKB and that girl I'm talking about were, like, a part of the song and, like, all that. And it was, like, a big song. It's called Other Side. And, like, I couldn't drop it because I actually had problems with the person that made the beat for it because I bought the beat, but they were, like... And it gives exclusive rights and everything, mm-hmm. so it's, like, my beat now and stuff. That's how, you know, that stuff usually works. You get a contract. Right. It's all mm-hmm. good, right? This person was younger, so he didn't have, like, a written up contract for his beats. And I was like, okay, oh. that's cool, right? I was like, just write me up something that's saying I own it, this and that, whatever. Cool, right? And he did. 
but it wasn't like a legally binding contract basically oh, no. so he did that right and i'm like thinking oh it's all good like i trust this dude like that's all good yeah. i shouldn't have done that but i was just like whatever like it's all good i bought it and he has this he did write it up so i was like it's all good then right yeah. and so i spent like all in all on that song like buying the beat and getting futures on it and like the mix and mastering from bucky and then like the video and all that and charging for eddie the video and like the places we went to it was about like three four k on that song alone and then went to post it a few months later because like i was you know getting ready for promo and stuff mm -hmm. so i'm like not gonna post it right when the video is in my hands but like you know after a few months i was gonna do it and i post it right and it gets copyrighted and i'm like why is this copyrighted apparently no. one i was doing that in those months he sold it to somebody else oh, and that person copyrighted it. yeah so and like you know i tried to do legal stuff and it was just like at the time couldn't do it basically and I, right. eventually i just gave up because i'm like even if i went to court and did the whole thing it's just like it would take more money to even yeah. get that back and i'm like it's not worth it i recently just remade it though and stuff so it's just got out like i think like two days ago oh that's gonna feel good yeah. to close that chapter finally. literally i was like because <laughs> like, i was like done. i remember when that song was like in my hands and like i was showing it to people like that hook was just like stuck in their head because it was very like catchy and stuff and yeah really good to feel good get that out there and stuff and yeah i wanted to ask during high school when you were you were making music actively yep, yep. did you ever perform at any talent shows or half times or homecoming i wanted to there's a few things i wanted to do and they were actually down but then it just like didn't line up there was actually mm -hmm. this um guitar player named jacob ludewise he was like great he was like played a lot of metallica and stuff and we kind of vibed with each other like he was really cool we were, like thinking of making a band it never happened but he had a great singer named jackie uhas and she was great she's still great i think she still makes music actually and she's actually actually one of the un only other people from my school that makes music totally different from me and john but Whoa. <laughs> she's kind of like i don't know like very powerful voice and like i've always wanted to work with her she's great hmm. but um we were like wanting to do that we were all kind of talking about it i think I actually even talked to mr fisher about it that's the vice principal and he was down it just never happened but me and my hmm. brother though when i was younger when i lived in rochester and we were seeing each other all the time doing music and doing oh no and stuff we played a few like open mic stuff and like little theater things and it was really cool i've done a little you know a few things before that but definitely like during covid right before covid did a few shows and stuff and then after covid it's been wild <laughs> and just shows non -stop. all the time yeah. non-stop like i think in the last two or three years like we've done maybe we've done definitely like over 60 shows i think it's oh been, my gosh. it's been great and we just keep getting booked and some of the biggest shows for us have happened like so far like we played pride with kia not this year but last year and that was great um we've played we've headlined seventh street we've played amsterdam bar hall that's where Ooh. i actually um proposed to kelly i was on stage hey yo, i've wow. seen that video yeah yeah that's a great venue yeah it was big and at that time that was probably like one of the biggest shows for us just like a big venue and like i love big stages because like me as an artist i'm crazy on stage like the reason we run backtracks a lot is not even because i can't do the songs it's just because like i'm crazy on stage so the, i'm You're like going hard i'm exactly. an entertainer at heart you know what i mean like even kia we've talked about it, it's like you know i could definitely sit there and do it. this whole song is easy you know what i mean i write them so i can do them you know what i mean like i know my abilities but also live i like to be an entertainer you know right. mm. and so yeah certain songs like we run backtracks and stuff and definitely the edm that's gonna happen you got too. It, right. but um yeah we're entertainers at heart like i love running around she's a dancer my fiance you know kelly and we love running around that's what we do when i'm with kia too we've been doing shows together because we got a collab mixtape coming and it's like we're all running around everybody's just like wow what's going on up there so amsterdam was the p perfect place i'm like doing oh, like wow. cartwheels and shit. i'm like there was this one time i like low-key accidentally fell but like it there's like a video of it somewhere i think on my page but like my leg went like this and i like tumbled and like i don't know it was like crazy i like landed on my shoulder and like i spun and like flipped back up and like it looked totally like it was supposed to happen and i like i remember re-watching that and i'm like that wasn't supposed to happen but it looks sick that looks sweet <laughs> right yeah. but yeah amsterdam was great because big stage and we love big stages play skyway studio b with my aunt which was really what? dope to happen she headlined and then we opened been wanting to do that for a long time so that was awesome to happen just a lot of great shows have happened you know played smaller shows too i really we just whatever anybody wants us to do we'll do and whatever we want to do we do you know it's oh, been really yeah. cool lately to do that you know i've always wanted to play shows because i've always known you know past music i'm a performer that's what my family does you know and so i know it's in my blood <laughs> not, not just the recording like, yeah. it's not just the hey my song's yeah. online like tell me what you think but like yeah because honestly like the online thing is like the hardest part 
like I feel like that's the hardest thing is to like get traction that way. You know what I mean? Because I'm definitely like an old soul that way. Like I like to play live. I like to mm-hmm. make music. Obviously, like any type of music. Like I've gotten into the rock stuff too with my um, grandma, grandpa, and doing that stuff. Like we like doing Freebird. <laughs> we love playing Freebird. But yeah, um, just like social media can be so weird sometimes for sure. And definitely yeah. like with me, like. I'll get in modes where like I'm like three months posting every day, going hard or every other day or something. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, man, like it's definitely doing something, like my engagement's up, but it's like that's a lot. Like Right. It's interesting how music goes, you know? Yeah. I wanted to dive into the discography before yeah, we have to take a break in about five minutes yeah. and yeah. ask about, you know, the the singles kind yeah. of starting it off. 100%. And then, like, what was the pull to make an entire album? Or were you a fan of the full album experience? Oh, yeah. I love, like, full albums. Like, that's also another thing of mine. But obviously, day and age, like, definitely posting singles is a big thing, too. So I try to keep a big, like, I don't know, just a lot of all of it. You know what I mean? Like, I post singles. And I'll sometimes, like, I'll finish a song that day, and I'm like, I'm going to drop it right now because I mm, feel like wow. it. You know what I mean? Like, this is a good song, and I don't really... I see visions for songs, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so if I drop a song and I'm just like, you know, this is a good song and I don't really see where I would put it in a few years because I got about, like I said, seven, eight tracks, I mean, um, projects right now that I'm working on with different people, my oh own my stuff, and, and all these things. We got like a three, four album plan right now just of our own music, and then I'm dropping mixtapes here and there. Like we're dropping a mixtape October 31st. We just dropped one a few months ago. And they're all, like, written in, like, four or six weeks. So it's wow. just, like, music on music. And then I'm collabing with people like Bikia, True Vision, Smoke Break, doing collab tapes, Spade. And it's just, like, everywhere, you know? But so I definitely like, me personally, like, albums because I like to make a story. And, like, mm. our first debut album is about to drop, I think, next year for sure. It's, like, our goal. We had some troubles because, like, our guitar player recently left. So Oof. we've had to restart, like, most of the album. We had it, like, over half done easily probably would have been done by now if like not within the next month or two but now we've had to restart most of it so we're back to like i don't know only five songs done now so having to restart sucks so definitely still our goal is like next year we don't want to affect too much you know but um that's called the rapture's coming and that's like a big thing with our faith and stuff is um we talk a lot about that and like with that is like the story of like also we're big on like um women's safety and stuff i talk a lot about that and like we talk about a lot of deep topics as well and it's just definitely a deep album more so than like anything we've written you know like i like i said i like to have fun but i also like to be real you know and stay right. true tell my story and this is definitely like the pivotal story like when this drops like i have big faith that's going to change a lot of things for us i've said that since day one we've been working on it now for like a year and a half but me personally i've been working on it for about like four or five years you know like wow. writing off and on I've almost had a first album drop, I don't know, like four or five times, you know? Mm. And when I came up with this name, I was like, that's it. That's like the one, you know? Because I wanted my debut album to be like the most special thing that, yeah. one of the most special things I've ever written. Like whenever it's out, it's like, yeah, that's, I could tell it's been a long time coming. And albums after that would be great too, but I want the first one to just be like, wow, you know? I just want it to be crazy. And that's like definitely a big one. So yeah, I definitely prefer <laughs> albums and like projects. Album specifically because I'm story based and stuff, and singles are fun too, and all of it. Yeah, a, vi- a visionary to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Visionary. Oh, that's so cool. That's perfect because of logic. Because I like logic, and that's his thing. Visionary. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, but definitely a bird's eye view of like how to release music because yeah. yeah. it's like there's no shortage of songs. It yeah, seems exactly. Like. And that's but how- at, while at the same time, like not just writing BS songs. No, exactly because. That's a big thing for me too is like I make every genre and that's always going to be to a say thing. the least. <laughs> yeah. That's a big thing of mine is like I always say, you know, sometimes I get in my my head sometimes and I'm like I make all these genres and stuff like, you know, I, I like to think of myself as a, a different artist, you know, a high end one in my own right, you know what I mean? And um there's a lot of people better than me, there's a lot of people at my lane too. And um I don't know, I just love music so much you know and that's dope that's perfect for a debut album too yeah. is because you can do a bunch of different genres exactly. i feel like on a debut album and yeah. i i wouldn't be able to that's guess kind of like because kim dracula is another big influence for me since he's been out and that's his mm. thing is you know he's made metal into like whatever he wants it to be like yeah definitely metal is his main thing but he'll have trumpets and stuff coming in and out and like wow. just like jazz stuff and then he'll go into red hot chili peppers into like a, a metal riff it's like that doesn't even make sense you know <laughs> bending genres so that's been a big thing for me is bending genres and like gone into edm we really want like our main thing to be edm you know that we're kind of drifting past metal a bit that's always going to be a part of us and like mm-hmm. that's a big thing on our first album but definitely like 
we want to play raves. We love the community of raves and stuff. That's a big thing for us. It's like, you know, shows we go to ourselves is most likely a rave, you know, just to like a lot of our friends are ravers and like we like to have fun there. Like that's just the community is great. Like I've been to all types of shows growing up in metal, going to hip hop with my friends and mm-hmm. then, you know, raves and stuff. And like, honestly, raves has been the most like accepting community and like safe community I've ever been around. And that's why we want to be a part of that because I genuinely believe in raves and EDM, you know, I like the music and I like the vibes of it and I can add more to it by, you know, Sullivan King has added metal and I think he's a big influence that way too, of adding metal our way of doing that because we listen to him a bit, we have, you know, um, but now it's just adding more, you know, because we can right. do really anything there's sky's the limit when it comes to that you know and past the sky all the exactly. way past the universe you I mean, know that's a pretty metal idea anyway <laughs> doing whatever you want exactly so like, <laughs> that's exactly. sweet though that's sweet we unfortunately need to take a break oh, in another geez. 30 seconds we're sitting down with saya here on dog star make sure to follow uh josiah hagblum am i saying that right hagblum hagblum it's all good it's german so there's, never... a, there's actually supposed to be two o's but eventually down the line they took off a o. right so, it so... took the umlauts off the they top did. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> straight up um uh saya with a dollar sign everywhere you can follow us at dogstar podcast check out our interviews check out uh saya's friends big kia dogstar interview heck um, yeah we'll be right back oh wow Oh, wow. Welcome back to Dogstar. Sitting down with Saya, learning about the uh, the early years, and uh, we've got quite a discography to cover before the end of the show. Heck yeah. Uh, where where so, should we start? Right. Before uh, we jump in, I'd like to say this discography is extensive. <laughs> yeah. This discography is dense, multi-genre. Multi-genre. Please dive into it sequentially if you can. If you're a true fan, we know you already have. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk about some highlights or some of your favorite uh, yeah. projects. Heck yeah. A um, big one, uh, we just had um, Love Happy Been On Trip just drop. It's a mixtape and kind of like the one we're about to drop in um, October 31st. But Love Happy Been On Trip is great. We have a song with Worthless. He's from L.A. I think that's a big highlight on that um, mixtape. And then also um, Tell Me is a big one because that's a big EDM track that was actually going to be on our album, but we decided to put on the mixtape because... We just want to kind of show people because Hush is a song that um, we're going to show, but Hush is kind of in that same vein. And mm-hmm. so we just decided to put on the mixtape to show people more kind of like what they're about to get. Give you know? you a little taste. A little taste, you know? I wanted to ask about those remixes at yeah. the end of the project. Yeah. Are those previously released tracks? Yep. Yep. Just kind of reinvented yeah, or maybe look, new beat? Yeah, if you look on SoundCloud, um, I think all of them are there. I think all three are there. Psycho and As I Lay Dying, big tracks as well. They were mm-hmm. big singles. Um and then um, My Girlfriend's Friends Hate Me, um, also a big song that was about one of my exes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I made remixes of them for the mixtape. Oh, I love that. And yeah, yeah. it's a, a 20 track. That's a yep. great project. Yep. It's kind of wild how it came together. Just like 20 songs all in four to six weeks, all organically. I had gotten fired from my job, so I was upset. I'm big with motivation. So yeah. when I get motivated, it's like wild <laughs> no, no stopping yet. no stop now was it 20 tracks shaved down from like 30 or was it just all 20 oh i mean i think i made a few more that didn't make it but honestly yeah like those 20 were all made based the main ones you know i think there was maybe four more that were made that was just like and eh, i'll keep them that's magical yeah that's wild and what you've got you were tell, telling us before the show you've got a bunch of projects like in in the works yeah uh related lunatics you should keep your eyes out for uh American uh, Freak Show. Yep. That's the one dropping Halloween. Yep. And then Related Lunatics is me and Big Kia's collab album, which should be dropping, like, I think maybe December, February area. I think we're okay, trying to plan okay. it. I mean, me and Kia are um, planning a 7th Street um, entry um, show, me and her headlining, co headlining. Yes. So, yes. And that's going to be a big show. So we're kind of maybe going to drop it then we're kind of talking about it she brought up december then we brought up the show so we're kind of seeing where things line up with seventh street because we're still talking about dates and stuff a specific date they had brought up february being the time period just like figuring out which day so right right that'd right. be perfect oh, wouldn't so be exciting. surprised yeah. if some of the tracks are uh performed at villains unleashed yep that's actually the debut of us um playing a lot of the songs it's not done yet the whole mixtape but all the songs that we have done are going to be played basically oh, that's october 23rd yep. at the underground music cafe yep. 
That'll oh be huge. Um, then you're talking about uh, kids have dreams with True Vision. We yeah. should keep our eye out for <laughs> a full EDM project. We got to keep yeah. our eye out for, and then Spade Seven 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 from yeah. back in the day. Got a, a project that you're finishing up with that as yep, well. Yep, and that's really cool because it's one of my best friends, you know, in music since the start. And that one's gonna be called Wooks on the Loose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Wooks on the Loose. Yeah. yeah. You oh guys my God. Still hang out and go to festivals together then? Oh, or? yeah, all the oh, time. That's like, dope. Yeah, it's one of my best friends. Mini Snoop Dogg. <laughs> so I, before we uh, have you talk about these two tracks that yeah. you graciously brought, um, any advice? You know, I'm, I'm sure you've it's been nonstop lessons over the past 10 oh, yeah. years, but Bunch. any advice <laughs> to uh, to maybe a younger artist who is looking to either enter one genre or maybe is thinking maybe I should give up four other genres to pursue yeah. just one? 100%. A big thing for me was actually tied to the creator. Um, he had brought up, like, I think he was at, like, a smaller show, and it's like, he was just like, you know, don't care about what people say. Like, you don't have to do anything anybody does. You know what I mean? You don't have to drop single by single. You don't have to drop album by album, whatever you want to do. He's like, honestly, my advice would be build up your, you know, catalog and stuff about how right. many songs. You know, drop 100 songs. Don't care if they get two views, 100 views, 100,000 views. It don't matter. You know what I mean? Some people, you know, my friend Kamari Cloud, he had posted the other day, like, there's no difference between 100 plays and 100,000 plays. Just about how much you get paid. Back in the day, you don't get paid that much for 100,000 plays. What you really want is getting an audience. That's how you get paid. Right. You know what I mean? It's gaining somebody's audience, you know? You know, if you get an audience, you can sell merch and, you know, have good experiences, you know? Because my big thing is, like, I love helping people, you know? One of my things is when I get a DM and people are like, you saved my life. It's like, I'm not that big of an artist. And to be heard so multiple that's... times that I've helped people through my music is crazy, you know? And I think that's the biggest thing is care more about you know, the people that are listening to your music, you know, I just think that's a big thing and don't really care too much though about the process of it. Just make music, drop right. music, have fun. That's what matters, you know? Music's my life, you know, growing up in it and gonna do it for the rest of my life and hopefully my kids do it too in some way, you know? And it's really what I wanna do and just really care about music and your process through because everybody's different, you know? Words of wisdom. We, we know you go hard on stage. Is there anything you do specifically to prepare or maybe any rituals that you do before you go on stage? We actually try to pray every time we go before we go out. It's oh, kind of like wow. a big thing. And actually, our guitar player kind of started that. And like since then, we've tried to keep that going. It's like a big thing because we're big in our faith in our own right, you know? Yeah. We're definitely open to the world and stuff. And like a lot of my friends like to talk about it. But definitely like we believe in what we believe in and like, that's a big thing for us is powered by something else. Like our album, our debut album is going to be called The Raptors Coming. It's definitely a big thing for us is faith and stuff. And so that's one of them. And definitely like there's a lot of sets we just like, we get the songs and we just wing it. And like me and Kia have talked about, she does that too. And like we're just made for it. Like we can go on a whim. Somebody, Versatile. If somebody yeah. wanted me to play a show right now, you know, like I brought my DJ board. I could come in right now, probably play a set and it'd be <laughs> great, you know? And so also that'd be advice too. Just have fun and get to a level of like, you know, you care so much and you can do it at any time as well, you know, because being a DJ is also about that, you know, being able to plug in and do this and that, you know, you got to find your rhythm. So, yeah. That's huge. Beautifully yeah. said. That's huge. Yeah. And and it seems like you're still maturing, still oh, changing and learning and yep. talking about doing more stuff with the message about the yep. women's safety stuff and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Hopefully to bring some of that to the old First Ave, Seventh Street, yep. uh, uh, whatever bad reputation they've got going on right now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, because I was actually yeah, it's kind of funny enough. That was a big thing too. Is when we played there the first time, headline there. Um, Dylan had talked to me and he's like, "I brought you in," and I didn't really know if I believed in it or not. And then he's like, "I saw you play," and he's like, "You made me believe in what you do." And I'm like, wow, there's like nobody like you. And I was like, "That's crazy." But then it was a while they pulled me aside after, so I thought that was really cool. That's huge. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's little moments like that that keep you fueled yeah. for another yeah. 50 years, you know? <laughs> is, yeah. That's amazing. Straight up. Well, you brought, uh, or did we talk about both those shows? So we got Villains Unleashed coming up on the 23rd of October. That's Underground Cafe. Um, and then the 26th, October 26th in yep. St. Michael. So it's a show with Cobb, yep. which is a corn cover band, and Durson. Yep. And you guys. Heck yeah. We're the co-headliner that night. It's going to be really fun. Um, Aaron Lonick is actually the drummer of Cobb, and he's also playing um, with the Silic on October 23rd. And we're really close with Aaron, so we took the show, of course. And then Durson is, I believe, the singer's son. And he's a great artist. It's actually his first show. And it's kind of cool. It's like a bloodline thing almost, you know, in some ways. You know, yeah. I consider Aaron family, so it's kind of cool. 
Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's fascinating to know that music will never stop. 100%. Yep. No matter who's making it. That's Heck awesome. Yeah. And, and I was just going to say, we've got about two minutes left. I'd like to maybe get a little behind the scenes on each of these tracks Let's you brought. It. You had mentioned Hush earlier. And then I think you brought a new one. We did, yeah. Oblivion. We have. Heck yeah. What can you tell fans about Hush? So Hush is a very big track. It's featuring Blaze Boy, who is one of the best EDM producers I've ever met. And that dude is crazy. Fortunately, he doesn't make EDM anymore. He was actually part of our team for a while. But recently, he's changed to indie music. But um, a few tracks he's done for us is Hush. He actually, we collabed on that. He made most of the instrumental. I helped a little bit, but he made most of it. Then I did vocals, of course, and then Hunter Fury, who's our old guitar player, he did the guitar. And it's kind of cool because what was given was like, came back was totally different, but in like the best way possible. Like Hunter gave this like really cool guitar and he put a synth on it though. So it comes Whoa. out way, like at the end, if you wait till Hush, the end is like way crazy. It's like, I think the best part of it is Hunter's crazy solo at the end. So hard that live it kind of didn't go as well because oh. it's so hard to play. And I think that's a good thing. He just, it's like so crazy. Yeah. It's like, I was just like, dude, that's like wild. Um, but yeah, that song's crazy. It's very just hard dubstep in the face, kind of like some hip hop in there with my rap and stuff. And then Screams, of course, adding metal aspects with the guitar, deep, like kind of corn, like vibes and stuff. And then, yeah, it's, it's just a wild. Extremely it, dynamic. Yeah, yeah, it's like the best track for live. Like anybody here's alive is like their favorite track. Like, <laughs> that's We always leave it for the end because people are like, what is that? <laughs> what oh. is that thing? And speaking of the end, we got about 20 seconds. Yeah. What can you tell us about Oblivion coming up? Oblivion's great. We got a music video coming up and we're I doing know. it with Drifter's Music. And yeah, the different music group actually, and um, it was great. Yeah, we did that thing in like two, three hours. Did a show for them at Pain Aft Fest, and they're like, yeah, they can either give you a music video for free for doing the show, or they give you money. It's like wow. obviously the music video. Yeah. Right? And um, Andrew happened to really believe in us, so it worked out perfect. And we wanted a video for that song anyway, so we just made a quick one, and it's coming out great so far, and it should be out around end of October. Well, thank Beautiful. you again, Sai, for joining us on Dog Star. Of course. Bow wow. Bow wow. Hush while I play heavy days while I stay All my haters, what you gotta say We are not the same All my goals, gotta keep up tight So the soul for fun, this is not a game